So I've mentioned a few times in my gardening videos how earthworms are actually not native to North America and not to uh, obviously Ontario, Canada where I am. But through the gardening process over the last two years I found a couple of worms at the cabin. So when I'm preparing these beds and I had to amend them again this year so where typically I like doing no dig and I do that where I can. I don't till the soil in other words. When I'm making these raised beds I had to amend the soil, add soil, add um, compost and, and uh, different types of soil that I'm either digging up or that I had bought and had to bring in. So doing that I had to dig up the beds and pull all the weeds out and as I did that I only found like one worm per every three, four, five beds. So hardly any and those were not pre-existing here. I think they came in with the compost that we got from our farm, our friends that have a farm the uh, rotted cattle manure and sheep manure. So there is a few here and um, they don't typically do well in this acidic soil, but as I'm improving the soil, oh, Callie's doing there digging for chipmunks again. As I'm improving the soil, it's, it's uh, becoming less acidic too as I add other stuff. So I guess it's a little bit more favorable. Anyway, point being, I've decided since they're already here, I might as well add to the population and buy some in. So I've got the Cadillac of Worms here, Red Wigglers. 5,000, what is it, five pounds? And approximately 5,000 of these worms, and the bag really is packed with them. It's obviously an estimate. They didn't count them individually and put them in there, but they know how much per pound typically there would be. So 5,000 Red Wigglers. And they're in pretty good shape. I think this shipped like a week ago, so I wasn't sure they were gonna arrive healthy but as soon as I put them on the soil they are burying digging and it's a good day to do that because it's cool and the sun's not out it's very cloudy so it doesn't kill them you don't want them exposed to the UV rays for long um, if and when the sun does peak out I'm actually burying them or putting them down and putting some compost right over top of them or this uh, bark, fine bark mulch that they'll actually eat so what I'm going to do is spread these out throughout the garden to put some in the compost pile I'll probably this fall dig some up put them in a bin and try to keep them alive um, or, or active composting material probably inside the greenhouse but in the meat and then I'm also going to put these into the beds of the greenhouse so all those raised beds just to add organic material as they eat the all the stuff that I add to it like they'll eat all this stuff turn it into worm worm uh, compost to worm droppings, which is very nutrient rich and uh, it aerates the soil and just keeps it healthy. So it's a good addition to the garden. I wasn't going to do it, as I mentioned before, since they're not native here, but since they're here now anyway, I mean, I'm gonna take advantage of them to help improve the soil. Hopefully they find their way underground before the birds discover them. They are moving quickly. I wouldn't put them out if the birds were swooping in. Plus that hawk that you can hear screaming in the background is a, a bird eater, a bird predator. So the uh, songbirds are mostly, and woodland birds are staying away. They're hiding in the forest right now, as those. It's a pair of hawks, they're always circling here. I should probably give a little background on the uh, garden where I'm standing right now, because it's been on and off the channel for the last couple of years and if you've been around you've saw me right from the beginning clear this land take the trees off this property and build this this garden and you will have seen that Emily was with me and my wife was with me for a lot of that time so basically what happened back then is when the pandemic hit in March two years ago I uh, decided to really focus on building our, our uh, food resilience and food security and a big part of that was to clear this plot of land and get a garden in with uh, um, some help. I mean, the majority of it, 90% of it, I did on my own, as I usually do, especially the harder work, the forestry work, and, the, and now recently the building of these beds. So what's been happening is this has been developing over time, and the family has really gotten involved in order to uh, just preserve our, our, or increase our, their, our family self-reliance, basically and our resilience. So this is about 10,000 square feet, this garden. And I have 
over the last two years put in a deer fence around the perimeter to keep most of the deer out although there was one in here this winter so starting from scratch was challenging there's still stumps in the way that are making things some of the beds difficult to, to access or to develop a huge birch stump here from a tree that was dying and that i cut down a couple of years ago and used the birch bark to actually make birch tar um, hugel mounds are along the the edge the uh, that'd be the east edge and then a massive bank uh, backfilling the cellar that I that I dug um, that's almost all logs and, and branches and leaves and stuff that all got piled there and then put some soil on top so it's really been a work in progress and it's really developing uh, pretty dramatically um, over time but like I said these stumps are not only an issue but throughout the property or throughout this garden uh, section I've got logs that are running parallel to the beds underneath the ground. I've got some, you know, crossing over. I've got them buried at different depths and so on. So some plants in a bed might do really well, and then the one next to it's not doing so well. It might be because there's actually a, a log that's not very well rotted right below that that's impeding the root growth. So it's created some challenges, but it, like I said, it's getting better over time. And as those logs start to con or continue to rot, they'll hold moisture and then release nutrients. So it is getting better. Now I also brought in a bunch of worms, um, red wigglers, 5,000 of them for this and for the greenhouse and the garden surrounding the greenhouse. So that's gonna help uh, break down a lot of these nutrients because we didn't have uh, worms or not many worms that um, naturally were do doing that process here. So all the breaking down of organic materials being done by fungi, bacteria, and other things like beetles and stuff. Anyway, that'll accelerate it and continue to improve the fertility. But the Hugel mounds, Hugel beds are actually doing quite well now. Like two years, there was some rotted logs in there, but a lot of them were fresh trees that I cut down, and there's still some stumps actually in that that um, Hugel mound, which is what is it, 80 feet long, I think. So that's going to again continue to get better. But what I did do is took a bunch of the plants out that were growing on there, had raspberries and and blackberries and some other things that weren't uh, well first of all chipmunks were getting under the wood getting inside the hugel mound and uh, making their their uh, nests and stuff in there Callie was digging them out <laughs> she was digging out the roots of the trees and the bushes so I had to fit back fill those back in take a lot of the plants out move them off the mound into the forest edge and then put um, I planted a bunch of different things like uh, blueberries and Pass caps and sea buckthorn and comfrey and stuff like that along the bed. So the reason I wanted to make this video was to, you know, just give a spring update because I think it's pretty cool watching a, a garden develop, especially one that was a, a, you know, dense forest not too long ago and now is becoming a productive vegetable garden. So they've got that seasonal change or the annual change, but now a seasonal change as we go from, you know, early this year getting the beds built as they worked on them, filling them up. Uh, getting cold weather crops in and now near the end of May getting all the warm weather crops in. My goal is to uh, get the last trellis or uh, arbor built on this side of the garden which is the west side for the tomatoes to grow up this year and some cucumbers and then you know we'll keep rotating so next year is probably going to be melons and other things climbing those but um, getting that done hopefully today and then um, really well yeah it's quite a few projects actually so back there on that cellar that I dug Emily and I are gonna build a shed and probably do an insulated one put solar on it We've got some solar power I can put in there I've got a freezer coming that can go and another little uh, uh, solar powered freezer that can go into the cellar into the front section of it and then a um, freeze dryer that's gonna go on the upper floor and then some seed starting benches and stuff like that so we're gonna build that together this arbor she'll help me with and then she my wife and my other daughter are basically gonna take over managing this garden so that I can focus on the the um, cabin again getting the log cabin finished and the rest of the homestead finished and the garden around the greenhouse including the fence it's a huge project so I know Content, if you're just here watching certain type of content on my channels, it's been very disjointed, hard to follow. But really, 
number one reason that is is because of the pandemic like two years ago things changed completely and my family got way more interested and involved in the self-reliance in our self-reliance as a family and um, my my goals my directive or my my uh, focus has been more on helping them and getting our family into this secure position before I get back to building the homestead of um, getting back to finishing the wilderness homestead that I really envision for us. So lots of changes. Um, it's This is going to keep me busy for a little bit longer. Like I said, I will help Emily uh, finish off the beds, fix a little bit of the fencing, uh, including some gates and the three openings here. Get that cellar finished, so we'll work on that together. Insulating it, getting a door on it, a little bit more backfilling, get the shed built on top of it. Get the power in there. Um, what else? And then, talking about a greenhouse, another greenhouse. That's really been effective having that. and It's increased our ability to grow food in spring and fall, but really didn't take full advantage of that this year. I just wasn't ready for it. I, it was inexperienced with it, but I've learned a lot and we'll make much better use of the existing one this year. And then probably next year build this greenhouse, maybe back here as well. Anyway, oh, irrigation. We're gonna work on that too. So we picked up a bunch of irrigation hoses, pipes, and fittings from uh, a farmer, not too, well, not that, that close, but um, a farmer that we stop in by, or stop into about once a week or two and get our eggs. Uh, bulk eggs, we get maybe six or seven dozen at a time, and um, he had a whole bunch of greenhouse stuff given to him, greenhouse and uh, market garden irrigation stuff that he has no interest in using. So he gave all of that to us for free. So we've got a stockpile back there by the cellar. We're going to lay that out, and then I've got the uh, pressure pumps that I've been using to get water to uh, pump basically and irrigate this garden without having to walk around with cans which is really inefficient um, and slow which is fine when the gardens are just starting out and they don't take much water but once we get into the heat of summer it can be really time consuming now I do like watering by hand because I like to go up to every single plant basically and and check on them and make sure they're doing well and there's no pests and diseases and, and uh, just check the overall health and, and see whether they're ready for harvesting or not but it's just way too inefficient i can't keep doing that with a total of 20,000 square feet there's 10,000 square feet here 10,000 square feet around the greenhouse and then i've got plants that have been planting throughout the larger acreage for wildlife but also for us some more nuts and fruit trees scattered everywhere so that's probably over you know three four or five acres maybe in total you know, dispersed Sorry about all the fidgeting, but mosquitoes are pretty bad. But like I said, we just finished several days of rain, and now it's starting to um, warm up and clear out, so bugs are going to be bad for a little bit. It's peak, basically, for mosquitoes. Mosquitoes hatched about a week ago, and they're really bad in the spring, usually end of May and, and part of June, before it starts drying up and they get better. Anyway, that's a lot of information, so <laughs> you can digest that, and I'm going to get back to work, and uh, you will know, continue to give you updates. Please check out Emily's channel, too. We're doing a lot of stuff together, and as I mentioned, I'm going to be turning this over to them to manage, so I'm going to get all the infrastructure in place that they need my experience or um, physical strength to, uh, to help with, and then I can get back onto my project. So please subscribe to both of our channels, or all three my two channels and hers if you're interested in seeing all this stuff kind of come together over the next little while. Um, and then this fall we're really going to be getting, showing a lot more of our food preservation, long-term storage and stuff. Which is, you know, my wife in particular has been putting a lot of effort into that over the last year. So she's got a lot to share with you as well. Anyway, back to work. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you back here at the homestead next time. Take care.